This is the first video in a series about suspension kinematics. In later videos we're going to look at the different types of suspension that you might use in an off-road vehicle and the kinematics associated with those suspension types. We're going to start off by looking at wheel kinematics, which is the fundamental process that's involved in suspension kinematics. We'll start by looking at individual wheel movements. Like all bodies in three-dimensional space, wheels on a vehicle have six degrees of freedom. So they can move forwards and backwards, they can move up and down, they can move from side to side, uh, and they can also rotate around three axes. In automotive engineering, we use special terms for those six degrees of freedom. So first of all, obviously the wheel can rotate. That is the job of the wheel. So we make it go around uh, and that allows the, the vehicle to, to move forwards and backwards. The reason we have suspension in the first place is because we want wheels to be able to move in certain directions and not in others. So the most obvious one is we want the wheel to be able to go up and down. So as it encounters uneven terrain, we want the wheel to be able to move relative to the body of the vehicle. So that up and down motion we refer to as bump and rebound. So when the wheel is going up towards the body, that's bump, and when the wheel is going down away from the body, that's rebound. The wheel can also move forwards and backwards relative to the body, and we call that recession. We very rarely want forwards and backwards movement uh, in suspension, but we usually have to accept it as a side effect of the way uh, we engineer the, the movement of the wheel. We also have lateral movement, so the wheel can move from side to side, so uh, in and out, towards and away from the body. The three degrees of rotation then, so obviously we want the wheel to be able to rotate um, because that's its job and that allows the, the vehicle to move forwards and backwards. When it rotates around a vertical axis, we call that steer or tow. So obviously at the front, we want to be able to steer the wheels to enable us to steer the vehicle. We sometimes call that effect tow. So when, when the wheels point in or out as the suspension moves, uh, we call those movements tow, but it's, it's essentially the same movement as you get with steer. So a rotation around a vertical-ish axis. Wheels can either tow in or tow out. So if the front of the wheel is pointing in towards the body, that's tow in, uh, and if the front of the wheel is pointing out away from the body then that's tow out. And you can get tow in and tow out on front and rear wheels. When the wheel leans in or out at the top we call that camber. Camber can be set statically, so a lot of vehicles are set up with some static camber so the wheels are, are leaning in or out relative to the body. Um, but also camber very often changes as the, as, the, as the suspension travels, as the wheel goes up and down. Camber can either be positive or negative. So if the tops of the wheels lean in, that's negative camber. If the tops of the wheels lean out, then that's positive camber. Camber is quite often a side effect of uh, the suspension kinematics, and we'll talk about that in later videos. You also get wheel movements that involve pairs of wheels or groups of wheels. So either two wheels that are sharing a common axle or where the front and rear axles move relative to each other. So the first one of those is lateral axle shift. So we see this in vehicles with beam axles uh, where both wheels are on a, a common beam. The whole axle moves sideways under the body of the vehicle. Another phenomenon that only really affects beam axles is axle steer. And this is where the whole axle rotates under the body of the vehicle, just like a kid's go-kart. The next one is track change, and this happens commonly with independent suspension setups. And this is where the wheels either both move out or both move in at the same time uh, towards and away from the body. The motions that you get uh, between axles, so this is where one axle moves relative to the other, you can get wheelbase changes. So if the front axle goes forwards and the back axle goes back, or vice versa, then the wheelbase of the vehicle will change. And you can also get a wheelbase shift. So this happens where both axles move in the same direction. So if both axles move forwards or both axles move backwards, you'll get a wheelbase shift. 
wheel motions result from uh, the motion of arms moving through arcs and the way that the end of an arm that's moving through an arc moves in and out relative to the, the fixed point on the inside. You can see that as the arm moves up and down, the outer end of the arm moves in and out relative to the pivot point. So that movement of arms moving through arcs is essentially the basis of all suspension kinematics. And in the forthcoming videos, where we're going to talk about various different types of suspension, we'll see that essentially what we've got is lots of different arms that all move through arcs that create various different kinematic behaviours. But essentially the principle is that everything is based on the movement of arms move, uh, rotating in an arc. So to summarise, we've seen that wheels have six degrees of freedom, and we call those degrees of freedom bump and rebound, recession and lateral motion, and then the rotational degrees of freedom we call rotation, camber and steer or toe. What we haven't done in this uh, video is talked about how suspension design and how the different types of suspension design really affect those wheel motions. So in the coming videos we'll talk about different types of suspension, both beam axle and independent types, and look at how those different types of suspension affect wheel motion, and in turn what those wheel motions do to the handling of the vehicle. If you like this video, then don't forget to press the thumbs up, and if you want to see more content about off-road vehicle engineering, then don't forget to subscribe.